Hello everybody, welcome from InnoTrans 2024. We are here and going on with another interview. So I'm turning to you, if you can please introduce yourself and what your company is doing. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this, for this interview. My name is uh, Michael schulz wilderlau I'm coming from the company Nevomo. Uh, it's uh, based in uh, Poland and uh, we are working on a new uh, idea of propulsion and uh, automation of uh, trains and uh, wagons uh, up to the automated train and wagon operations. Uh, before I uh, was in uh, Nevomo, I had a history of 20 years of uh, Deutsche Bahn, so I'm uh, kind of experienced in, uh, in uh, rail uh, and now working since uh, one year uh, at uh, Nevomo as a business development, developing projects, um, not so deep in the, in the technology, but more on the, on the business side to, to bring this new idea of technology into real life uh, projects beside the research and development of the technology. So can you tell more about your newest projects you are working on at the moment? Yeah, sure. Uh, at the moment, it's a very, very exciting for us, a very exciting situation. Um, because we just announced here on uh, InnoTrans our, our first uh, customer uh, project. Um, we have a deep uh, cooperation with a, with a CapTrain group, CapTrain uh, Germany. Um, and we worked on uh, uh, identifying potential projects uh, in Europe, also in Germany. And uh, we found a very interesting idea to, to uh, use our Magra Booster product uh, in, in a real uh, environment. Um, and uh, this will take place in Germany, actually, uh, potentially starting, starting next year. Um, we will start our first project paid by a customer. Yeah. And can you tell us where are you with the Magra Booster? We have already written and uh, and that's uh, what uh, are the next stages and where are you yeah. with the project now? For sure. Uh, your, your last article, like we see it here on, uh, on the screen, uh, was uh, the, uh, shown as the results of our, our tests uh, on our own test track. We have our own test track in southeast Poland. Uh, it's a 700 meter long track of uh, um, uh, long rail track where we implemented our technology on a prototype status. So we just showed the, the functionality of this, uh, of this technology. Um, it's, it's very on a, on a prototype level, for sure. And what we are doing since then is to industrialize our, our project. So, so make it um, manufacturable, so make it implementable into the, into the uh, rail infrastructure. Um, as you know, we have two main components of our technology. It's the, the stator, which will be implemented in the, in the rails or between, between the rails. Um, in, the, in the prototype status, it was a one part, let's say, uh, produced on site. And now in the uh, industrialization, we are um, developing a modular, uh, better implementable version of this, of this stator. So we have three meter long modules, which can be handled much more easy, easy than, a, than a, a full length stator. Um, this, is, this is one part of the development. And the second part of the de uh, development in our tests, we attached the, the magnet, which is needed on the, on the wagon side uh, to, the, to the frame of the wagon. And uh, we changed the design that wise that we now attach the, the magnets uh, to the bogies. This has a big advantage because we just need uh, um, to, to homologize these, these new kind of boogies and can put these boogies under each kind of wagon um, to make it booster, booster ready. And we don't need to uh, make big changes uh, to, the, to the wagons uh, for, for, for themselves. So this will be very helpful to, to implement our technology in the infrastructure by modular uh, stator and in the in the wagons by having uh, ready prepared uh, boogies. 
And what you what would you see as a commercial uh, the technology to be in commercial um, operation? Our first project um, will be, as I as I said, in this shunting operation. So um, we will automize the the shunting procedures, which is today very manual. You need a shunting locomotive. This must uh, 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 come to the to the um, uh, to the place where it's needed. You need a shunting locomotive driver, and both of it is is very rare in in today's times, and it's getting getting worse. In the, in the next time. So everybody wants to electrify and uh, automize the shunting operations in their, in their sites. And this will be our, our first project um, to automize this shunting operation between two production sites. So we have two, two halls. One, in one hall we have a loading area, in the other hall we have the unloading area. And today they use um, two wagon groups um, which always are ex exchanged to each other. So when loading is, is done, um, then they call the uh, locomotive with a driver. This locomotive will uh, uh, arrive uh, there and does this, this exchange. This can take up to two hours of waiting time and uh, 45 minutes of exchange. With our technology, we will implement our, our stator with a, with a control system just uh, along this, uh, this connection. And then uh, you just have to push, when you finalize the, the loading, you just have to push the button and the wagon will, um, will go to the, to the unloading area. So this will be a big change in, in operation procedures for this, uh, for this uh, industrial uh, area where we want to, to implement it and will um, make everything much more flexible, much more easy and also uh, much cheaper by saving uh, huge OPEX costs uh, in, this, in these operations. Maybe if it's a correct uh, a description of your company that you are somewhere in between uh, uh, Hyperloop and railways. So where is if, if it is a correct description and where are you exactly between the two technologies and what is your direction yeah. um, as you might know nevomo uh, was um, uh, when, when nevomo was founded almost seven years ago we uh, had the, uh, the the focus of hyperloop that is that is true um, but but to be, to be true uh, that Hyperloop will not solve today's problem. It's not our biggest problem at the moment to, um, to travel with 1,000 kilometers between two cities. And that is what, what, we, what we found out very, very quickly. And that is why we decided to check the, 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 the components of the Hyperloop technology whether these components can also solve today's problems. So in, when you say Hyperloop has four main components, it's the vacuum tube, it's the, the new pods, it's the propulsion system, the magnetic propulsion system, and the magnetic levitation system. And we checked whether one or two of these components can help by uh, uh, solving today's problems and also uh, prepare uh, um, away from the legacy uh, railroad up to, to Hyperloop. So this, this was the idea. And that is why we have two different products right now. We have the MagRail product, which is um, the combination from the magnetic uh, propulsion system, magnetic levitation system and new pods for high-speed passenger traffic with levitating pots on existing railways. Because this is the unique point of, of Nevomo. Um, it's not the linear motor. This is invented 100 years ago. But uh, our unique point is that we can implement our technology in existing infrastructure and uh, also existing uh, uh, vehicles. Uh, the existing vehicles, uh, when it comes to, to these points, uh, I have to talk about our second product. It's a MagRail Booster. Magrail Booster just uses the magnetic propulsion system 
Um, as I said, like for our first uh, project uh, now, we still use the rail uh, the the rail to roll uh, the rail to wheel contact um, because it's one of the most efficient ways to 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 move uh, wagons or or trains steel on steel. Um, and uh, just we what we what we change is the the propulsion of these of these vehicles, and we use this magnetic propulsion from also uh, used in, uh, in in hyperloop technologies, um, but for for to or to to solve today's problems like automation in uh, in areas uh, uh, where you have a lot of shunting, also the the point of electrification. Because there are many, many areas in, in railroad uh, industry which cannot be electrified by the um, by by a catenary. So, for example, in harbors, in in terminals, you cannot uh, build a catenary under a crane uh, where you where you ch uh, uh, change uh, uh, containers, for example. So, and that is why um, we. Um, use this component of the Hyperloop technology to solve today's problems, let's say. And this can, by, by the way, it's, it's not only in shunting areas. We can also talk about use cases on, on the main lines, for example, to, um, to help heavy trains on steep inclines, to, to climb on the, over the Alps when you want to uh, go from the North Sea to, to Austria, you have to, to cross the Alps. and. Uh, this is a most times the biggest restriction in uh, in uh, train weight um, to to uh, go over these steep inclines, and there our technology can help because we can put additional propulsion where it's really needed. We we don't think about uh, to to implement our technology 1,000 kilometers from the North Sea to Austria. This is not needed. You can use your locomotive as as uh, today. But for this 20 kilometers of steep incline, where you need additional power, there we can put our idea right into action and help uh, to, to increase the, the total weight and the capacity of the whole network. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the interview. Thank you.